Hey guys, welcome to a YouTube video. Today it's going to be a showing off video. And I originally was going to do an unboxing video, but sadly the video I had filmed, I accidentally deleted. And my good friend Larry gave me a whole bunch of stuff, and I'm going to re-show it all here. So I hope you guys enjoy. And I'm also going to show off a couple of items I manufactured and restored, and a couple of items that recently got listed on my eBay profile, which I'll put in the description if you're interested. And showing off a new item I had constructed. So anyway, first things first is the items that Larry had given, given me. First thing is he gave me a bunch of old timers. And I've already worked on a couple of them. And he gave me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven old timers in total. The first one is my favorite. This one is a 80T, a larger version. Sadly, the spring is broken right there, right at the brass pin, which what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to take that pin out and replace it with a new one, and that should fix it. And then the rest will be easy, because then it will be cleaned up. And he also gave me another 80T, if I'm right. Yep. This one's in much, not very good shape. And this one I'm going to strip for parts. The main thing this one needs is a new blade. Of course, I trimmed my nails yesterday. Yeah, this one mainly needs a new main blade and a new spring. So this one I'm going to strip for parts. The handles are still good and the springs are still good. So thank you very much, Larry. That's awesome, man. And he and I talked quite a bit about this. He really helped me out with this bundle. And he did tell me I could do whatever I want with them, but majority of these I am keeping. I'm not selling any of these. So anyway, getting back into it. Here's the ones I have cleaned up. A couple of... Three four OTs. This is one that I cleaned up. Not really much anything was wrong with it, minus the corrosion. Cleaned the inside, polished it all back up. That one looks really nice. And this one came out gorgeous. This one I'm definitely keeping. And this one is another three four zero T. Sadly, the blade's been used quite a bit, but it was still 80% there, so I went ahead and cleaned it up anyway because the handles are in really good shape. I mean, these aren't worth a ton of money, but they're great knives. I mean, even if they're old and not being made anymore, they're great knives. They're a lot better than their China counterparts. Ah, this is another one I'm keeping that came out in really good shape. This is another 340T old-timer. Blades are in really beautiful shape, and I love this one. And this is another one. No, I didn't restore this one. Okay, so those three other ones I restored, these are ones that I haven't got to yet. This is another 340T. Has a patina to it, which I will take off. And then this is another one he gave me. Sadly, the blade on this one is severely loose. Let's see if you guys can hear that. So this one I'm going to strip for parts, and I'm either going to put it back together with a new pin... Or I'm just going to strip it for parts and put new blades in it. Don't know yet. Okay, so those are the old timers that he gave me. Three of which I restored. And he also gave me three pearl knives with real mother of pearl handles, which you hardly ever see. This one's definitely the, the nicest one. It's a... Let's see if I can pronounce the name. Something Cutlery Valley, New York. I can't really pronounce the rest because it's still corroded. I haven't had a chance to clean this one up yet. This one I am going to clean up even with a broken blade because these are real pearl handles and they're very fragile. Here's the other pearl knife he gave me. This one is a I and L George something. Let me see if the other blade has a better mark so where I can read the rest. Looks like it says Sheffield, but I can't really make much else. Still, real pearl handles going straight into my collection. And next is another pearl knife that he gave me that's in really good shape. Again, real mother of pearl isn't something that's easily kept. It, it can crack just as easily as glass. And this one just says Herms, Germany, which where majority of pearl knives come from. And then this is a Cutmaster Stockman that he sent me. I cannot wait to clean this one up because this one's going straight into my collection. 
and I'll do an overview of all these in a YouTube short. He also gave me a couple of USA advertisement knives. This one's a baby little Imperial that just says USA. Would have went on a little pocket watch keychain. And then this is a little pen knife that would have had some kind of advertisement on it. Made by Kent Cutlery. I'll clean that up and put that in my collection. This was one of my favorites that he sent me. This is a Ranger knife made by Imperial. I've actually got a large stockman that my friend Sean gave me. So now I've got a set of them. Okay, I think that's all the pocket knives minus the ones I'm going to get to. And next, he also gave me a couple of Damascus knives that were in beautiful shape. Love how these handles turned out. He actually did these handles himself. And they look gorgeous. And I love the inlay that he did. And this one's one of my favorites. I just love the slimness of it and how it easily grips into your hand. It's got a decently thick blade too. Definitely a heck of a good carving knife. I love this one. Uh, next is this one that he sent me. This one he obviously did not make, but I love it nonetheless. No brand besides a number. And I know this is from a movie. I just cannot remember which one it's from. I think it's called like Zombie Hunter or something like that. That this movie is from. This knife is from. It is definitely wicked looking. I cannot wait to put this in my collection. I've already got a spot picked out for it. And he gave me a couple of German knives. This one has the original sheath. Uh, looks like it says Compass Germany. Sorry if I'm butchering that name. Model 845. Haven't had the chance to clean this one up yet. I'm going to eventually. That's going to go straight into my collection because I don't have very many German knives. And here's another one that he gave me, again with a stag handle. Model 496. Made in Solge in Germany. Beautiful. And this is another one that he gave me that I really like. 13907. Made in Peak Germany. Beautiful. This is another one of my favorites that he sent me. A nearly mint imperial fixed blade hunting knife with a convex grind going all the I mean saber grind going all the way to the back of the knife. I do not have one in this good a shape. The only other one I have that's in this kind of shape is my colonial that another friend gave me. So now I've got an imperial. This one I cannot wait to get a sheath for. I'm either going to find the original sheath or I'm going to make one for it. Because I love this thing. And then this is another one of my favorite items he sent me. A mini little sword. Do not know where this was made, but it's very well made for a letter opener. I mean, it's very well made. It's not your standard cheap letter opener you buy at Hobby Lobby. And it's got an etch on it. And it's not sharp, but it's pretty well made. I mean, it's even got a real f flat head screw, just like the real swords did. And I love the scabbards even built just like the original. Kind of like a mini version of a real sword. That's going in my collection. I love that. And then he also sent me a couple of buck knives, which was my favorite. Oh, I almost forgot. He sent me something else, too. I almost forgot. Man, I was so close. I almost forgot. He also sent me these as well. He sent me a near mint buck 442 with Dramond American. Yeah, I think it's what it says. I'm sorry if I, I mispronounce it. Beautiful. Did not have one of these, and it's going straight into my collection. He also gave me a sheath. Goes to either a buck two two or I mean a buck four two two or a four four two. So it either goes to this one or this one. And since this one has a pocket clip on it, I'm gonna put this one with this is one I already had in my collection. So thank you very much. These sheets are actually hard to come by. You can buy modern ones, but finding the original is always better. He also gave me this 347 with the S30V boss blade and carbon fiber handles. That is gorgeous. I love this thing. If this wasn't, wasn't being made, I would carry this sucker because I love this. I love how smooth it is to open. 
and you don't have to flick it real hard. And he also gave me a beautiful Spitfire 722 with a green anodized aluminum spacer. That is beautiful. One of my favorite designs. I love how easy it is to grip in my hand for a pocket knife. And I've got an orange one too, and now I've got a nice silver one. And he gave me this beauty, which when I first opened it, I thought it was a Chinese knife. But when I saw the word buck right there, I was like, wow, I've never seen one of these before. And I have not, actually. This has not been manufactured in a very long time. And it surprised the heck out of me that he found this. This is a model 180 patent pending. Pretty heavy-duty knife, that's for sure. I mean, look how thick those blades are. That's going to look great in my collection. Again, thank you very much, Larry. I love all this stuff, man. I really appreciate what he did, what he does. And here's a couple of knives that he himself customized. He made the sheets and did the handles. This one's one of my favorites that he did. I love the wooden handle on this. I don't know what kind of wood this is, but this is gorgeous. And it's extremely comfortable in the hand. I mean, it's nice. And I love how well made the sheath is. And then this is another one that he did. Again, very well-made sheath, and I love the little little finger on it so he can grip on it really easily. And it's got a nice saw back on the, on the tip of it. Heck, I might carry this one camping next time because this is really handy. Okay, getting into the other stuff that he sent me. Oh, yeah, this was another one of my favorites. Check out this big honker that he sent me. American by birth. You're damn right. It's a large freaking folding knife, and it is sharp, too, so I got to be careful with that. I wish I could get more stuff like this in my collection, how large these knives are, and I'm going to have it displayed just like that in my collection. It definitely makes you feel like you're holding a chopper. Now, that's a grown man's pocket knife. Made in China, of course, but it's, it's a nice item for my collection. Don't get your finger right there, because it's going to go... Oops, sorry, I need to drop that. Uh, another item he sent me is a beautiful supply of leather. This is actually some good stuff, too. It's really thick, and it's different colors and shades. I really appreciate this because this is a, I need this stuff all the time. I burn through this constantly because I've started to make leather sheets for some of my knives before they go for sale. I normally did not do that, but I've been, because getting the materials isn't very easy. So I have to stock up the materials, then start using it. So thank you very much, Larry. This will definitely get some good use. And he also sent me a couple of belts. This is a Walking Dead commemorative belt belt that is made out of an old seat belt. I like that. And he sent me a military, bu military belt as well with what I suspect is a U.S. Marine logo on it. Those who can correct me can mention it in the comments if I may be wrong. Then he also sent me some feathers. I put them in this canister that he sent me. And I'm actually going to give these to my mom because she makes dream catchers. And I know she'll really dig this. I uh, think that is it. Oh, he gave me some other stuff. My apologies, man. I'm sorry. I forgot I put some of it in my jewelry box. Give that. He gave me a couple of other buckles. Here's this one that he gave me. Beautiful. And he gave me a couple of other ones. This one's solid brass. I'm definitely going to get some use out of these. And I love this one that he sent me. I don't know if he made this himself, but that is gorgeous. Then he sent me, I think there's a couple more in here that he sent me. Yeah, that one. Yeah, I think that's it. Here's the other ones that he sent me. Get all that back. Shut my door real quick. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, I think that is all the stuff Larry had given me. Y'all make sure to give him a lot of love in the comments. Again, I'm sorry I accidentally deleted the video. It was purely on accident. Uh, next is the items I have uh, made and refurbished. And so I'll go ahead and show those off. This is the Hawkbill knife. I found while I was in BB, 
And I was able to get some of the logo off. I found out it is a Camillus knife. That's kind of what I figured it was because that hole in the handle is pretty distinctive. And the way the lock is, is normally vindictive of a Camillus. And I'm probably just going to sell this one or give it to a friend of mine. Because the logo is almost worn off. You can barely see the word USA on it. Still, it's a good functioning knife for somebody. And then this is the old timer I picked up at a flea market. Wasn't really much wrong with it. Uh, this is another 340T. Really came out really beautiful. I look forward to selling this one. Because I've already got one that's in better shape. And this is another one that I picked up at a pawn shop that I cleaned up. It's an LB5. Came out really well. I was able to get it to make it look a lot nicer. Sadly, I was not able to fix the lock. I'm going to eventually. I just need to get a new tension bar for it, which ain't a problem. Anyway, getting into the, now getting into a few that I put on eBay already. This one's already on my eBay profile. This one started its life as one of these, if those who may remember. These are a whole bunch of... I'm going to, sorry if I butchered this name, but M-E-R-I-D-N, Merden, or Modern SP Co. Stainless Steel Butter Knives. And what I like about old butter knives like these is they're not actually pure stainless steel. They're like probably 10% stainless and like 80% carbon steel with a silver plated handle. And these are not worth a whole lot of money. I picked a whole bunch of them over 70 total for only 5 bucks. I sold a small bundle of them. And I kept the rest. And I've already taken a few and made a few knives out of them. Because these solid handles are great for making tangs. So anyway, this is one that I have already put on my eBay profile. If you are interested in this, I'll put the link to my eBay in the description of this video. I made the sheath for it and everything. The handle is a repurposed file handle. And the guard's aluminum. And I reshaped the blade just a little bit to give it that hunting knife look. And I even left the original logo on it. Beautiful. Uh, next is this one that I made as well. Same butter knife, but I used a ram's horn handle that I repurposed. Another one that I did. Gives it kind of like that classic Bowie knife look. And there was a crack in it right here, and I patched it. Came out really nice. And the same sheath as well. Again, both of these are for sale. Okay, next is getting the other ones that will be for sale eventually. Here's a couple ones I used a Bakelite handle for. These handles I brought back with me from D-Queen. And they were just the perfect candidates for these. There's one. And then here is the other. These will be for sale once I get some leather sheets for them. And then here's another one I used. A, I think this is Birchwood on the handle on this one. Again, I brought that back from D-Queen. Gave it somewhat of a different style. And left the little collar right here. Beautiful. Look forward to putting that one for sale once it gets a sheath. And this one I just put a regular wooden handle on. Again, gives it that hunting knife look. And I used a piece of leather for the spacer. Still came out really nice. Uh, then this one I made without a guard. Again, recycled handle from the ones I brought back from D-Queen. And then used a piece of stainless steel for the, for the collar right here. And then used a piece of leather on the inside. And then cushioned it all together with epoxy. Again, came out really nice. And then this is the knife from the kitchen knife lot I, I, I acquired. And I refurbished it. Sadly, it was not able to lift a marking off of it. But I definitely preserved it. I patched the cracks in the stag handle and lac lacquered it over. And then preserved the original collar and polished it up. And then I gave the blade a straight razor look to preserve it as much as possible. Still turned out really nice. And I preserved the butt cap. That one's going in my collection. I'm not selling this one. Okay. Oh, yeah. Next is this one I also made. Don't make very many of these. This is a cleaver I made out of a circular saw blade. And I heat treated it and gave it a blued finish. It's razor sharp and it's got some good weight to it. Used aluminum for the pins. And a nice piece of wood for the handles. 
This one's on my eBay profile as well, if you are interested in it. Okay, I think that's all I've got to show. Last is the final... Oh, one more item. <laughs> I almost forgot. Been a while since I made one of these again. I made a small pirate's cutlass out of a machete that I bought while I was in BB. Kept the original machete look. It has a distal taper going all the way out to the tip. So I gave it kind of a pirate's cutlass look. I took one of those large spoons, you can still see that, and turned it into a guard and filled the whole handle with liquid metal, permanently locking it in place and adding some good weight to it. And it is somewhat flexible, but that's really good for a cutlass. And I put a better edge on it, and it's perfect. May not be the prettiest thing, but heck, this is a pirate sword. They didn't take care of their swords. That one I am going to keep, but if someone gives me the right offer, I'll probably sell it. Okay, I think that is it. The last item to show is a prop that I had made. Uh, I'm not much of a video game person, per se. I just play them when I'm really bored. And one of the games I have grown to love is Fallout. I've been playing Fallout 3 here lately. Again, I've already beat it, but I love playing because it's a good game. And I would love to get some Fallout memorabilia into my collection, mainly weapons and things that you can use in the actual game. And since I haven't been able to find any for a fair price, I made one of my own. And those who know this game will know this weapon. And that is I built my own custom dart gun from the, from the game Fallout 3. And of course, looking at it, you can tell it's not a one-on-one -on -one replica. This is my own version of this gun, and I made it all completely from scratch. Oops, sorry about that. And you can tell right off the bat, it's not like the one in the game, but it still looks almost really good. I took a real old paint gun and just repurposed it, found it for, I think, $10 on Facebook. And it didn't come with the can, so I just made one out of wood, and I put the label on it. And I repurposed a whole bunch of parts for these. And I even made the car from scratch, all from wood and pieces of stainless steel for the wheels. I mean, the whatever they call it, the pieces for the wheels. And I even made the wheels themselves out of wood with a screw right there that just screws it right on. Still came out really good. I know it's goofy, but heck, it's from Fallout. And in the game, you can actually use this a lot of times. It's one of my favorite weapons to create. The only thing I am missing in the game is called surgical tubing. That is when you wrap it around this and these two wheels, and that's what makes the actual bow work. And this one's not going to be functional. It's just a prop. If I make a functioning one, I'll do a video of that. But this one's just going to be a wall hanger for my collection. At least now I can say I've officially got something from Fallout in my collection. So anyway... That's all I've got to show. I hope you guys enjoy. And y'all make sure to give Larry a lot of love in the comments because he's a good friend of mine. Again, if you are interested in anything I said is on my eBay profile, it will be in the link in the description. So I hope you guys enjoy. And as always, stay sharp and keep collecting.